Chet Hanks is the third child of Tom Hanks, one of the most famous actors of all time. Anytime his name has been in the media, it is negative, giving the perception that he is the black sheep of the family. Tom has consistently maintained a positive and wholesome image, which has endeared him to audiences worldwide. Many people refer to him as America's dad. However, the actual son of the perceived down-to-earth actor says things were not as good as they seemed. This became abundantly clear when in November of 2014, 14, Chet revealed that he underwent treatment for cocaine addiction. This was the first time Chet made headlines, quite the introduction. People wondered how a child raised in the same home as Tom Hanks took such a dark path. I've been struggling with substance abuse since I was 16 years old. Finally, at the age of 24, I decided to get some help. With 50 days of sobriety under my belt, I can honestly say I'm the happiest I've ever been. Chet said that his parents were very supportive and helpful towards him overcoming his problems. People sympathized with Chet for being so open regarding his addiction. However, just a few months later, he posted an Instagram photo that would change people's minds about him. Chet uploaded a photo of him holding two guns with a caption that reads, check out the song me and my n-word chill that dude just dropped on SoundCloud. Juice, link in bio. I hit him with the joke, like Kobe when I show, like Reggie when I ride, my nigga shoot for fun, I need an extra line, I fuck a nice bra. Most people had no idea Chet was an aspiring rapper, and they were not fond of his use of the N-word. Chet claims that music is the first outlet he used to express himself when he was 15. First things first, man, we talking about the hearse. I got mad gifts, but this verse about the curse. A when life stops and the good times cease, D breeze on and dice grandma rest in peace. That was the first verse I ever wrote. However, he didn't record or release music until he became a student at Northwestern University in 2011. Recording White and Purple under the alias Chet Hayes, this song was a remix of Wiz Khalifa's Black and Yellow with the lyrics changed in reference to his school colors. He also dropped a few other club style songs to show his versatility. People were dumbfounded at the thought of Tom Hanks' son of all people becoming a rapper. I'm aware that the reason my rapping has been publicized so much is because of that fact, so I'm appreciative of the publicity that I get because of it. According to Chet, his father heard most of his music and was pretty supportive. He suggested his wealthy background didn't discredit him as a hip-hop artist, saying, Hip-hop is much larger than that. It exceeds boundaries beyond race and socioeconomic background. It doesn't matter what country you're from or what nationality you are. Hip-hop is music, and art form, a culture. It can appeal and come out of whoever it speaks to, and it speaks to me. Three years later, when people questioned Chet's use of the n-word, he said this. Look, I know the majority of y'all are not going to get this, because the history is still so fresh in our country. But hip-hop isn't about race. It's about the culture you identify with. And can't no one tell me what I can't say. But he made a little adjustment to that statement. I just want to clarify one thing. Under no circumstances would I ever go up to somebody that I didn't know and just be like, hey, what's up, my nigga? It's an unspoken thing between people who are friends who understand each other. But it wasn't just the word, it was the multiple photos of him on Instagram flexing guns and trying to act like a gangster when everyone knows that's not his reality. To put it plainly, people just saw him as a douchey, out of touch rich boy who thinks he can say and do whatever he wants. However, Chet claims that these antics were all a side effect of his really bad drug problem, because later on in 2015, he announced that he was finally in rehab. Hey, I just wanna say I know like my name's been in the media about me like going missing or getting kidnapped or something. I'm just telling y'all know. I've been I've been in rehab, right? I'm just trying to get my shit together and I'm doing pretty damn good, you know what I'm saying? And you know, another thing is, you know, like that stuff I was in the media about, about the N-word and everything. You know, I, I know a lot of y'all kind of understood the point I was trying to make, but the truth is it's not my place to speak on that. And I'm genuinely sorry for the people that I offended. Up until this point, people were so eager to know what Tom Hanks thought about his son, and Chet finally let us know how his dad truly feels in this interview. But first, a word from our sponsor, Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has way too much information about you? Feels pretty weird. I'd rather have that stuff not available to just anyone looking for it. Data brokers are making tons of money selling your information to robocallers and spammers. But Aura can find the data brokers that are sharing your information, and the brokers are legally required to remove 
remove your info if you ask them to. However, they make it very difficult to do so. That's where Aura comes in and submits opt-out requests for you. You can try Aura for free for two weeks using my link, aura.com slash patrickcc. Aura does so much more to protect you, like antivirus, VPN, password manager, identity theft protection, credit monitoring, and much more. The best part is you get everything at one affordable price. I really like the password manager. I have tons of different passwords, so it's nice to keep them all in one place. Plus, they will alert you if your passwords have been compromised. Let Aura protect you and keep you safe online. You can let people continue to exploit you and profit off your private information, or you can go to aura.com slash patrickcc to start your two-week free trial. Link in the description. Thanks, Aura. What does your dad think about it? Can I ask that? My parents are just like, they're just like making sure I'm good. Like, they don't really like tell me what to do anymore because like I'm grown, you know what I mean? Like. His brother Colin was asked and he just responded with a bunch of vague compliments. He is, um, you know, obviously he's doing his own thing. He's very, he absolutely very, is. he's very passionate about what he does and uh, he's got an, an incredible work ethic. Um, he really does. I mean, that, that dude hustles and, and works hard and, you know, I want him to be happy. I want him to be successful. I want him to, to feel like he's uh, following his passion and, and, and doing what he wants to do. From this clip alone, it seems like his brother Colin is more well-adjusted and mature, and that's because they were raised entirely differently. Tom's two older children are from his first marriage with Samantha Luz. Colin, his first son, was born and raised long before Tom was a massive success. Tom said, Colin and Elizabeth remember when their dad was just a guy trying to make rent. Colin grew up in Sacramento with his mom and spent every other weekend in LA treating it like a fun sort of getaway. Colin didn't grow up living a lavish lifestyle. His mother kept him grounded. I don't know how much money my mother was getting an alimony, but what I heard was, we don't have the money for that. Your dad has that. We don't have that. Chet, on the other hand, was born and raised in luxury. Tom Hanks met fellow actress Rita Wilson in the early 80s on the set of Bosom Buddies, sparking a friendship. Following the end of his first marriage, Hanks and Wilson reunited on the set of Volunteers in 1985. In the film, the two played lovers, in which Hanks later expressed that there was instant chemistry. I asked Rita if it was the real thing for her, and it just couldn't be denied. Their connection led to a romantic relationship, and three years later, the couple got married. Before having two children, their eldest son, Chester, Chet, in 1990, and their youngest son, Truman, in 1995. Two years before Chet was born, Tom starred in Big, which became his breakthrough into superstardom. He was paid $1.7 million for this film and seven figures for every film thereafter. He went on a legendary run of huge hits like A League of Their Own, Sleepless in Seattle, Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, and Toy Story. By the time Chet was six years old, Tom Hanks had achieved a legendary status in Hollywood and was earning tens of millions of dollars. I was watching Big when I was a little kid and I was like, that's dad. What's he doing on TV? And mom was like, he's an actor. That's what he does. Chet and Truman were raised in Hollywood, in a luxurious mansion. They mingled with other celebrity children and took extravagant trips on private planes all around the world. However, Chet says this wasn't exactly what people thought it was. They expected it to be like me, like like running around like this Richie rich, rich, this like rich, rich, like Richie yeah, Rich, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. Richie Rich, like yeah. like I didn't have a care in the world. I had like endless money, and I could just like hang out by a swimming pool all day, like drinking mm -hmm. margaritas, and I'm like, like whipping room. around like Rolls Royces mm -hmm. and shit, like partying in mansions. Like that's what they expected my life was, and it wasn't like that at all, Tell at them. all. But me, it was like, yo, Dad, can I get some money? He was like, yeah. Like, go wash my car, I'll give you 20 bucks. Wow. wow. You know what I mean? Like, wow. it wasn't like that. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't like that. Like, not only did they not spoil me, but they went to, like, far lengths to make sure, like, that I was, like, as normal as possible. Chet swears he wasn't spoiled and had to work for everything he has. However, people had a preconceived notion that he was a rich brat, automatically disliking him. But the people that were nice to him, he felt that it was only because he was the son of Tom Hanks. Either way, Chet felt like the entire world was against him. His rebellion was smoking weed, listening to rap music, and being the antithesis of his father. When his parents caught him, they didn't discipline him themselves. Instead, they sent him away to a wilderness program for troubled teens. Second Nature and Trotto was a troubled teen therapy program located in Santa Clara, Utah. Wilderness therapy programs are a major part of the multi-billion dollar troubled teen industry, which also includes therapeutic boarding schools and residential treatment centers. These programs are designed for adolescents struggling with issues like drug dependency, depression, 
poor grades, low self-confidence, suicide, and eating disorders. As the name suggests, wilderness therapy combines counseling and wilderness experience like hiking, camping, and other outdoor recreation activities. At the program, Chet was forced to do manual labor in the remote wilderness. He said he never knew when he was supposed to leave the camp. It's extremely uncomfortable. It's not like camping. It was like designed to be as harsh as fucking possible. These wilderness programs have earned themselves a terrible reputation over the years. The main philosophy of the TTI is that teens need to be isolated and broken in order for them to improve. And this is done by making them participate in humiliating group activities, forcing them into manual labor, giving them small amounts of food, and threatening them with violence. The program that Chet went to, Second Nature, decided to rebrand to evoke therapy programs after a staggering amount of lawsuits, one claiming that a child was unable to bathe themselves for eight weeks, one saying a child is sleeping under a tarp in freezing snow, one child said that she was held in solitary confinement, one parent was denied communication, she didn't even know if her child was alive. There is a very extensive record of horrific complaints about Second Nature and every other wilderness therapy program in the United States. Chet said this program did not do any good for him. He wanted to go harder, party harder, do harder drugs to make up for lost time. He spiraled for years. I hated my life and I felt like a f up. I felt like a loser. That didn't last very long. <laughs> that, 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 that didn't last very long because it was in that time period that I found out I was having a daughter. Chet's girlfriend at the time, Tiffany Miles, revealed to him that she was pregnant. Immediately, his whole mindset shifted. He realized he needed to get sober, take responsibility for his actions, and get a real job so his daughter can have a good life. He tried another go at music. This time, he started a duo alongside Drew Arthur called FTRZ. They released two singles models and nowhere land as well as the ocean park ep this music went relatively unnoticed and chet knew his best chance for a real career was not in music but rather following the family name into the world of acting he landed a few one-off roles in marin tales and curb your enthusiasm before landing more permanent spots in two hit tv shows Shameless, and Empire. Empire provided him with enough money and stability to provide for his family. And believe it or not, Chet is actually a decent actor. Must be in his blood. He's particularly exceptional at acting like a Jamaican man. And in 2020, the world got to see his talent. Big up the whole island massive. It's your boy Chet, and I, Coming straight from the Golden Globes, you are saying? Me see my father Tom Hanks presenting in a while. Soon forward come. Big up, tune in. This took place on the red carpet of the 77th annual Golden Globes, where Tom Hanks was accepting the Cecil B. DeMille Award for his impact on the industry as an actor, producer, writer, and director. Sadly for Hollywood, nobody cared about the awards. Only two things were being talked about that night. One, host Ricky Gervais absolutely roasting the audience for three hours straight, and two, Chet Hanks speaking patois. The internet was on fire, calling him cringy, racist, and a cultural appropriator. He responded to the criticism with a second video on Instagram outside a smoothie shop in LA. Big up the youth them way out of Kingston. When I wake up this morning and I see the thing turn up, internet gone mad. Respect, you dumb now. I soon fire with a yard. Booyaka, booyaka. Chet was loving the attention, and he kept feeding into the memes. Despite the outrage, many native Jamaicans thought it was hilarious and were not angry. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> <Arr. Arr. laughs> The man is just having fun, man. He even got an acting role for one episode on Atlanta because of his fake accent. You grow up in Trinidad? Or Jamaica? No, it's Trinidad and Tobago. And no. I'm from Tribeca. However, Tom never spoke about his son's dreams of being Jamaican. Chet was feeling unstoppable, and he made an announcement on Instagram that hyped up all white boys around the world. Um, look, I just wanted to tap in really quick. I just got this feeling, man, um, that this summer is uh, its about to be a white boy summer. You know, take it how you want. I'm not talking about, like, Trump, uh, you know, NASCAR type white. I'm talking about, you know, you know, me, um, John B, Jack Harlow type white boy summer. You know what I mean? Let me know if you guys uh, can vibe with that. In the caption, he urged people to tag a real vanilla king in the comments. A lot of people, particularly white boys, thought this was hilarious as Chet was playing off Megan Thee Stallion's 2019 hit, 
Hot Girl Summer. Others took offense to the phrase, especially since Chet had already garnered criticism for appropriating black culture in the past. In a video posted a few days later, Chet clarified, you know what's not white boy summer? Is having any ill will or prejudice towards anybody from a different background, race, walk of life than you. Chet capitalized on the controversy by releasing a song, which is his most successful song of all time, as well as releasing a line of merchandise, which included hoodies, t-shirts, shorts, tank tops, leggings, caps, and bike shorts. However, further controversy ensued after people called out the gothic style font placed on the merchandise as it resembled a font used by white nationalists. He also launched a line of Black Queen Summer merchandise using the same font. I want to see some white boys and some black queens wearing each other's shirts. However, White Boy Summer was about to come to a screeching halt before it even started, when a video of Chet and his girlfriend Kiana Parker in the middle of a domestic altercation hit the internet. This just attacked me with a knife. No, I didn't. Did I attack you with a knife? Can this bitch just attacked me with a knife. Did I, put, did I attack you with a knife? No, no. Chet claims that Parker attacked him with a knife, stole his belongings, and charged thousands of dollars on his credit cards. The pair reportedly began seeing one another in March of 2019, but split in January 2021 when Parker got a restraining order against Hanks, alleging that he threw a bottle at her and said no one would believe her because she's, quote, a ghetto black bitch. Hanks denied any abuse and later filed a lawsuit against Parker for assault battery, and theft. Parker told a different story, and claimed that Chet threatened her with a knife when she showed up at his home with movers to collect her things. She also claimed that Chet pushed her and attacked her outside. Chet's attorneys told media outlets, her claims are completely false, fabricated, and fictional. Come April of 2021, Parker filed a $1 million lawsuit against Chet. Her lawyers accused Chet of making a mockery of black women in the criminal justice system by proclaiming that it's going to be a white boy summer and a black queen summer while knowing he mentally and physically abused a black queen. Chet has continued to deny all allegations of abuse and as of right now, the case is still in process. Kiana even tried to make Tom Hanks a witness, claiming he provided a healer for her, who has not been named. During this whole time, Tom has never spoken about Chet's alleged abuse. Chet decided to end his white boy summer with a statement about the vaccine. White men get the vaccine first thing. Psych! Bitch! If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I never had COVID. You ain't sticking me with that mother needle. It's the mother flu. Get over it, okay? If you're sick, stay inside. I'm tired of having, okay? Why are we working around y'all? If y'all, uh, if you're in danger, stay your ass inside. I'm tired of wearing the mother Chet's parents were some of the earliest celebrities to test positive for COVID-19 during the pandemic. Chet himself posted a video to social media about his parents' status after hearing the news. Tom and Rita would go on to donate their blood to help with treatment-focused research. Despite this, Chet remains skeptical. Many people want to know what Tom Hanks thinks of his son, but we honestly don't know. Tom has basically never spoken about his son in a public forum. A Man Called Otto is his newest film where his other son Truman was chosen for the lead role. The most recent video of Chet and Tom is at this Dodgers game singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Chet says that his dad loves and supports him. Most people who say that Tom is embarrassed by Chet are just guessing. It's actually Tom's silence that draws him criticism. He has been sort of the innocent nice guy his whole career. His lack of controversy and always positive positive attitude makes people think that he is secretly hiding something. More specifically, conspiracy theorists think he is a part of the QAnon global child sex trafficking ring. They point to Tom's Instagram, where he often posts photos of people's gloves, children's socks, shoes, and pacifiers. They say Tom is hiding in plain sight, leaving a trace of evidence for his crimes. Plus, he has the comments disabled making it look even more suspicious. Chet has actually addressed this on the Impulsive podcast. Like, this is, dude, like, it's really funny because, like, I saw this, like, with the conspiracy, there's, like, these are the gloves of the abducted children that they left behind. It's, like, dude, my dad, like, was doing that glove shit because he's, like, trolling Instagram. Right. And, like, he kept on, like, seeing, like, gloves on the ground because people, like, lose their gloves in the middle of the winter in New York and it falls out of coat or something. He kept on seeing gloves, so he just, like, took a picture and posted it because he's, like, trolling Instagram. Like, my dad does not give a shit about social media. For the past year, Chad 
Pet has been trying to avoid controversy and tell his life story on various podcasts. He is also trying to promote his brand as a fitness and life guru. Hank's Fit is his subscription-based membership club for the low price of $300 per month, where he will make you a custom workout routine, meal plan, and give you meditation techniques. Chet wants people to understand that he is not just a Nepo baby who was handed everything. That description, Tom Hanks' son, like, mm -hmm. who is that? But who are we imagining as Tom Hanks' son? Who, 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 the imagination of who that person must be is in the mind of every single person. It's, mm -hmm. it's subjective. There's no doubt that being plagued by living in the shadow of your father is rough. Maybe he is not like most typical Hollywood kids that grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth, but he has gotten away with a lot of questionable behavior, and that is likely because of his celebrity status. However, Chet has not earned his own fame. He still has big shoes to fill. The harsh reality is, he's going to have to do something pretty remarkable if he wants to be known as Chet Hanks and not just Tom Hanks' son.